All right, so that was that first line. So let's go ahead and record that on the beeps. It's over now. Ooh, nice creepy. <laughs> really good. Yeah, I like creepy. All right, number three. Let's take a look at that. Level E. Level E. Level E. All right, level. Did we get that? No. That was a pretty. All right, here we go. This is it? Level E. Nice, good. God, you're hitting the sink, all right. So that's good. Number five. Keep him creepy. He's <laughs> a vampire. Level E. Okay, good. Now you notice there was a pause, there's the word, and then we'll pause it. Okay, here we go. Nice. No. They are vampires as well. Nice. 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 Alright, number seven. My favorite line of all these shows. saying not only because we were all waiting for it <laughs> but because you wanted a reaction out of your scene partner that's how to take what you're doing which is very good and really put English on the ball sort of make it swing which is you always want to be asking what am I trying to get out of my scene partner in that moment you're trying to we know what you're trying to get out of your scene partner and that's why we emotionally relate to it the earlier stuff you want to do that even on the simple stuff it's over now level E no they're vampires as well what, why are you saying that to her? You know, and because what, what reaction are you hoping from her when you say it? Does that make sense? Which is, which is, usually people say, what's your motivation? And it means, you know, let me demonstrate to you my emotion. No, 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 we don't want any demonstration of an emotion. We want you relating to your scene partner. And the, the easiest way is to say, you know, oh, Yuki's, oh, God, she's so annoying. She got in trouble, look, it's over now. Let me explain this to you, level E. No, they're vampires as well. You're in trouble, little girl, you know? That's one way. Or to say, oh, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, it's over now. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll do it again and it might be fun. <laughs> Very different depending on what, she, what he wants out of his scene part. All right, cool, nice job. And I have for you a keychain from Mononi on aisle 800. We'll visit their booth. There you go, thank you very much. Next up, we'll have these guys over here. Ooh, next one up. Oh, you have fans, huh? <laughs> I love you, Mark! You're Kyon. Kyon from the Melancholy of Cutting Who's Kyon? No pressure! Oh my god, you just made me this! Alright, so you know the drill? Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, preview this uh, first line up. Number one. Okay, before we go, before we go, Christmas. Yes. Kellen has always been a bit of a, a, of a enigma to me because of what he's doing and where he's at. Tell us a little bit about Kion. Kion is not a hopeless romantic, he's a hopeful romantic. He's a skeptic who can't really be a skeptic because he wants magic <laughs> and so he sort of tries to play yeah yeah I'm too cool oh no that's fun 
But he's so he's so over everything because he really wants magic. He just didn't get it when he was younger. So now he's got a certain level of maturity about it because of that. All right. So keep that all in mind while you read these words. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, Mark. Do what you want. <laughs> all right.